Hi everybody, welcome to the first lecture of the Ankit Faria Certified Ethical Hacker course. Over the next few weeks, we'll be discussing a wide variety of different tools, techniques, methods and apps related to cybercrime, cybersecurity, ethical hacking, which will show you how you can hack into computers, uh, networks, websites, mobile phones and even ATM machines. So the next few weeks are going to be extremely exciting, educational and informative all at the very same time. Now before I start with today's lecture, I like to actually share with all of you the structure of the lecture. Today is the introductory class where we'll be discussing some basic fundamental concepts that are extremely important for all of you to understand before we can actually move on to more technical, more advanced, more, uh, you know, more interesting uh, tools, techniques and methods and concepts that are going to be discussed in this particular course. So today's lecture is all about IP addresses, how you can find out somebody else's IP address. Not only will we discuss one method, we'll be discussing a wide range of different methods that you can use to find out somebody else's IP address. And then finally, in today's lecture, we'll also be discussing how you can trace an IP address to its exact geographical location, be it continent, country, state, city, and ISP, which is a very important technique that the police department across India uh, needs to use all the time. Whenever an email has to be traced to a terrorist, or whenever an email has to be traced to a cyber criminal. The technique that we're going to uh, discuss in this today's lecture is what the police uses each and every time. So today's lecture is extremely important. Although we'll be focusing on the fundamental concepts, I'll request all of you to pay very close attention to today's lecture. And before we actually start with the lecture, I have one more request. I request all of you to take out some kind of notepad and a pen because it's very important for all of you to take notes throughout all the lectures of the AFCH course. And you need to take notes not only of the theory or the concepts that I'm going to explain to all of you. At the same time, you also need to take notes of important website addresses that I'll be sharing with you or the software names that I'll be sharing with all of you. Because if you really want to become a master of ethical hacking, not only do you need to understand the theory really well, what is even more important is that you need to download the hacking software from the internet and you need to practice. Because only with practice can you actually become a highly skilled master of ethical hacking. So please take out your notepads before we start with today's lecture because I'll be giving you very, very interesting software names and website addresses today. So on that note, let's go ahead and switch to the PowerPoint slides of the day. So I'd like to actually start by answering a very basic question. And the question is, who is a hacker? I'm sure that when all of you registered for this AFCH course, you had some idea of what exactly is a hacker, who is a hacker, what does a hacker do, what does a hacker not do, and so on. So finally, let me actually clear all the doubts about the definition of hacking, the definition of a hacker. See, first of all, it's extremely important to understand that a hacker is not a criminal. A hacker is actually a good guy. But over the years, the media has actually maligned the term hacker and hacking and projected that term to be somebody who is involved in illegal activities or somebody who is committing cyber crimes. So a hacker is definitely not a criminal. A hacker is also not somebody who is using an axe to make furniture. A hacker is actually... In reality, somebody who is obsessed with technology, somebody who loves using technology, and somebody who is very good at using technology. So if you are 
a lover of technology and if you love to play around with te technology then you can be a uh, you can be called a hacker especially if whenever you're using technology you're trying to stretch the limits of technology and you're trying to be innovative you're trying to think outside the box if, uh, whenever you use a software or a website usually the software and website will allow you to do certain things but if you are a hacker you are trying to make that software or website do things that it is normally not supposed to do so that is what hacking is all about stretching the limits of technology stretching the limits of gadgets stretching the limits of devices stretching the limits of software and applications and that is what this course is all about this course is about teaching you how to think like a hacker how to think in a certain way so that you can find some way some back door into a particular system software website mobile phone or just about any other device so if a hacker is not a criminal who is a criminal then so typically in computer security there are two types of people you have hackers and then you have crackers both hackers and crackers actually have the same knowledge however the difference lies in how they utilize or implement their knowledge a hacker is actually a good guy who's going to use his knowledge for positive purposes to maybe improve the security of a website or a network or a system because a hacker has strong ethics and a hacker will not break the laws so without getting permission of a person a hacker will not try to hack into their system on the other hand a cracker which is a bad guy is somebody who does not have strong ethics and is somebody who is interested in causing cyber destruction or is somebody who is interested in uh, you know indulging in criminal activities they do not believe in taking permissions all they want to do is hack into websites systems networks and devices without any prior permission and create havoc so hacker is uh, is a good guy while a cracker is a bad guy and i'll really want all of you to think about the fact that by enrolling in this particular course you have started your journey towards becoming a knowledgeable a master of ethical hacking that is some uh, you're going to become a person who's going to use the knowledge for positive purposes and not to commit crimes because i like to remind all of you that india has strong cyber laws and in case you get caught committing a crime or in case you get uh, caught doing something that is illegal something that you're not supposed to do then beware because according to the indian cyber laws you could actually be sent to jail for for doing something as simple as hacking your friend's facebook account or downloading some file that you're not supposed to download not only can you be sent to jail for several months or several years you can even be fined very heavily so imagine you could be playing around with your with your own future with your career with your life by simply you know stretching the limits or breaking the laws of the country so please be aware of the cyber laws in india uh, whenever you are practicing anything that has been caught, uh, taught to you in this particular course i really don't want any of you to get into trouble with the police in india or with the cyber laws of the country so what does it take to become a good hacker what are the ingredients of a hacker if you want to become successful in the field of ethical hacking what are the four simple things that you must know really well so first of all you need to know basic programming and i'm sure that most of you have learned at least one programming language either in your school or college or my by just maybe reading some book or by reading some blogs online even if you don't know programming i highly encourage all of you to learn programming because without knowing programming it will be quite difficult for you to become a master of ethical hacking 
and this course is not about programming so in this course i will not be teaching you any programming language so some basic programming language like c or c++ or some web programming language is something that i encourage all of you to start learning in case you don't already know them the second thing that you require to become a successful ethical hacker is strong knowledge of networking and in this course whatever important networking concepts you need to know to become a good hacker i'll be personally teaching you so even if you do not understand anything about networking don't worry because in every single lecture of this course there is some networking element or some networking concepts that i'll be teaching you which are relevant to the field of computer hacking the third thing that you need to know to become successful in the field of ethical hacking is the basics of unix most of us uh, in india we have grown up using windows and we are very good with windows but very few of us have used unix in case you have used unix before it's great in case you have not used unix at all don't worry because in this course i'll be teaching you everything about linux or unix finally the main uh idea behind this course is to teach you the ability to think like a criminal because unless you are able to put yourself into the shoes of a criminal unless you are able to think like a criminal there is no way you can actually catch a criminal to catch a criminal even you need to start thinking like one that is what the main funda behind this course is this course over the next few weeks is going to teach you how to think like a criminal how to act like a criminal how to you know uh, anticipate like a criminal how to implement your skills like a criminal however for positive purposes that is what this course is all about now at this point of time i like to take out a few minutes to introduce all of you to something known as backtrack now some of you have probably never heard of backtrack before while well, others have definitely used backtrack before either way i like to inform all of you that backtrack is going to be a big component of this afch course so what is backtrack backtrack is a linux operating system and i often like to call backtrack hackers paradise so why exactly is backtrack a hackers paradise now the beauty about backtrack is number one of course it's free number two you can download it free of cost from the internet it's a linux operating system and the best part about backtrack is that it comes pre installed with hundreds of hacking software so think about any kind of hacking technique everything from password cracking to wifi cracking to maybe uh, you know arp poisoning or man in the middle attacks or phishing attacks ddos attacks any kind of attack that you want to implement backtrack will allow you to do so because backtrack like i said comes built in or you know comes with hundreds of hacking software pre installed so that is why backtrack is a hackers paradise backtrack like i said can be downloaded free of cost from the internet the website address from where you can download backtrack is www.backtrack-linux.org later on in this course there's a separate lecture that is dedicated to backtrack where i will actually show you demonstrations of the top 25 hack attacks or hacking attacks that are possible using backtrack so i'll highly encourage all of you to start using backtrack even if you have never used backtrack before by the end of this course you'll be a master of backtrack you can actually start downloading backtrack today itself if you want because backtrack is 
3 or 4 GB in size. So it's a pretty large download. And as you know, Indian internet connection speeds are not that great. So it might take some time for you to download Backtrack. So please download it today itself if you want, because later on in this course, uh, Backtrack is going to be a necessity, because a lot of the lectures are based purely on Backtrack. And when you download Backtrack from the website, there will be two versions that you can download. One version is VMware version. The second is ISO version. So if you are a beginner of hacking, if you have never used Backtrack before, I would say that you should download the VMware version of Backtrack. Because the VMware version of Backtrack can be run within Windows itself. So it's run as a virtual machine within Windows. And the ISO version of uh, Backtrack is for people who are a little bit more experienced, who have used Backtrack before. Uh, the, VA, the ISO version of Backtrack will run from a CD or a pen drive. So it won't run within Windows. It's slightly more complicated to use, but it's not that difficult either. So it's completely up to you. Like I said, if you're a beginner, if you want to start downloading Backtrack, please download the VMware version. If you're not a beginner, then you can download the ISO version. So both ISO and VMware versions of Backtrack have the same software installed. So there's nothing uh, you know, unique or special. Some, there's no extra software if you, if you use the uh, ISO version or anything like that. So the software is the same. It's completely up to you. So we'll come back to Backtrack sometime later on in this particular course. So now that we understand what exactly is hacking and what is the difference between hackers and crackers, I'd like to talk a little bit about the job opportunities that are available to ethical hackers in India and typically what your job profile is going to be if you become an ethical hacker. Now, first of all, pretty much any kind of industry that uses the internet or uses technology requires ethical hackers. So everybody from the banking, finance, insurance uh, industry or telecom, software, hardware, IT services, BPOs, KPOs, outsourcing companies, e-commerce and even web services and even the government, be it the military, police department, intelligence agencies and so on. All of them are nowadays hiring ethical hackers. So there's a huge demand and unfortunately very few courses are available on the field of ethical hacking, which is why this course is going to be extremely useful to you because sitting at home across anywhere from India, you can actually learn ethical hacking. And once you become an ethical hacker, your job is essentially to try and hack into, the, into your company's server or network. And while you're trying to hack into that server or network, you can identify the loopholes that you find and make a list of it. And at the end, you need to prepare, prepare a report. And in the report, you need to say that these are the loopholes that I found and these are the solutions that you can implement to fix those loopholes or improve the security. So, so the job of an ethical hacker is to use their knowledge that normally only criminals have, but use their knowledge for positive purposes to help companies identify the loopholes and also implement solutions so that criminals cannot hack into their network. So that is what typically an ethical hacker does. So what exactly are the steps of hacking? What are the steps that a hacker has to follow whenever he or she wants to break into a computer? See, hacking into a computer is very similar to breaking into a house. Because if I am a criminal, whether I am hacking into a computer or whether I am breaking into a house, the steps that I am going to follow are going to be exactly the same. First of all, the first step that every criminal has to perform be it cyber criminal or real life criminal, is to identify the victim. So if I am a hacker, 
I need to find out what your IP address is. If I want to hack into your computer, you're the victim, I am the criminal. So I need to find out your computer's IP address. Without your computer's IP address, I cannot hack into your computer. Forget that, I can't even connect to your computer. Similarly, if I am a robber and I want to break into your house and steal your LCD TV or your jewelry or your cash, what do I need to do? The first step is I need to identify your address. So I need to know where you live. So that is the first step, identify the victim. The second step is something known as information gathering and network reconnaissance. In information gathering or network reconnaissance, what the criminal has to do is find out as much information about the victim as possible. So if I want to break into your house, once I know where you live, I will probably stand outside your house for some time, maybe a few days, and try and get as much information about your house as possible. For example, I'll try to find out what time do you leave the house? What time do you return to your house? How many doors are there in your house? How many windows are there in your house? Whether you have a security system, whether you have an alarm, whether you have a security guard or not, and stuff like that. Similarly, if I'm a hacker, and if I want to break into your computer, I need to perform network reconnaissance and information gathering, and I need to try and find out as much information about you as possible. Everything from what is the operating system that you're running, what are the software installed, what are the ports that are open on your computer, what software you have installed on each of those open ports, whether you have a firewall or not, what kind of anti-hacking software you have, and things like that. So that is the second step, which is information gathering and network reconnaissance. The third step is, whatever information you have gathered in step number two, in step number three, you need to analyze that information, analyze that data, and try to identify a loophole. So maybe coming back to the example of breaking into a house, maybe I found out that you have four doors in your house and ten windows. So I analyze every door and window and I find out that maybe one window at the back of your house is not closed properly. So that is my point of entry. That is how I can enter your house. So in the third step, I need to find a loophole. Similarly, uh, if I am a hacker, if I want to break into your computer, once I know the open ports on your computer, I find out that maybe port 80, you are running some old version of a software. Since the version is not updated, there is some loophole in it. So that is my loophole that I will use, that is my entry point into your machine. So step 1, identify the victim. Step two, get as many information about the victim as possible. Step three, analyze that information to identify a loophole that you can use to break into your victim's computer. Fourth step is the actual hack. That is, you actually hack into the victim's computer, which could be using ready-made software like Metasploit or Backtrack or you can write your own software as well. So breaking into a computer is exactly like breaking into a house because even the fifth step is the same. Once you are break, broken into a computer or once you are broken into a house, once you have stolen whatever you wanted to steal, once you have caused the damage that you wanted to cause, the fifth step, in my opinion, is the most important step, which is to escape without a trace. Because no criminal wants to get caught. No criminal wants the police to be able to trace him or her back. Which is why the fifth step is so very important. So the fifth step and the first step is what we'll be discussing in the next few lectures. And once we have discussed step one and step five, we will be slowly discussing step two, three, and four. And by the end of this course, you would understand each and every step that I mentioned on the screen. 
very much in detail. So on that note, let me go ahead and share with all of you a couple of real life examples of some of the most shocking cyber crimes that I personally come across in my career. The reason why I am sharing these case studies with you is to make you understand how dangerous cybercrime has become and how easy it has become for criminals to break into computers. The first example is from Mumbai. This happened six or seven years ago. There's a lady in Mumbai who lived in a typical Mumbai apartment, which is a one-room apartment. And this lady had this habit of chatting on the internet for several hours together every single evening. One evening, when the lady was chatting on the internet, the person with whom she was chatting managed to hack into the lady's computer. And after hacking into the lady's computer, that criminal managed to infect her computer with a spying software called a Trojan. And once her computer was infected, the criminal, probably sitting in some other part of the world, remotely, secretly, managed to use that Trojan to switch the lady's web camera on. So from that moment, whatever happened in the lady's apartment, which I like to inform all of you, was a one-room apartment in Mumbai, was actually being broadcasted live on the internet 24 hours a day. And the lady had absolutely no knowledge that something so terrible was happening to her. Life.